Hello friends, uh, this is a new lecture on peripheral decarboxylase inhibitors. Uh, it is a continuation of the old lecture of Parkinsonism. This is the third lecture. So please refer to the last two lectures, in order, at least the first lecture in order to get better understanding of the present lecture. So peripheral decarboxylase inhibitors so these include carbidopa and benzerazide normally levodopa is given this peripheral decarboxylase inhibitors are always given along with uh, levodopa levodopa is a drug of choice for parkinsonism so whenever we give levodopa this levodopa 90% of levodopa is converted into dopamine peripherally so there is only 1% of levodopa which is available to cross the blood brain barrier and enter the brain and show effects. As a result, we will have to stop this peripheral conversion of levodopa. For stopping the peripheral conversion of levodopa, we use dopami, dopa decarboxylase inhibitors. So the dopa decarboxylase inhibitors include carbidopa and benzeracide. So carbidopa and benzeracide, these will inhibit the conversion of levodopa to dopamine. And thus, among 100%, 100% of levodopa can cross the brain barrier and show its effect in the brain. Now, this carbidopa and benzeracide, then the question is, if carbidopa and benzeracide crosses the blood brain barrier, even then they stop this conversion. But fortunately, carbidopa and benzeracide are designed in such a way that they do not cross the blood brain barrier. So, carbidopa and benzeracide are only peripheral decarboxylase inhibitors. They will inhibit decarboxylase enzyme only peripherally, not centrally. So, this is about carbidopa levodopa. So, so what are the advantages? The main advantage is number one, they will increase the uh, levodopa, right? Because this uh, conversion is lost, the levodopa increase availability of levodopa. So, this increased availability of levodopa can cross the blood brain barrier and thus has increased action. Number two, if you see the levodopa, whenever it is converted to dopamine peripherally, so this dopamine has many cardiovascular actions and also it has peripherally mainly three actions. Three actions are present peripherally for, le for dopamine. That is levodopa. Levodopa converted into dopamine peripherally. It has three actions. Number one, this dopamine, this will activate the beta receptors and thus result in inc increased heart rate that is tachycardia and sometimes it can cause postural hypotension and also causes arrhythmias if given in higher doses. Okay, so these three are the side effects of dopamine peripherally, not centrally. So these side effects are completely lost. So there is decreased cardiac toxicity. Okay. The one more do one more side effect is whenever dopamine levodopa is converted peripherally to dopamine, this dopamine goes and this will act on CTZ receptor on medulla. What is CTZ? Chemotactic zone chemotactic zone on medulla. So this chemotactic zone or CTZ zone, this will Whenever this dopamine activates the CTZ zone, this will cause nausea and vomiting. So, the side effect of nausea and vomiting is decreased here uh, because of because there is no conversion of levodopa to dopamine. One, so, these are the major side effects. And now, there is decreased on and off effects are noted and even the degree of improvement is higher. So, these are the advantages of uh, using carbidopa or benzeracide that is peripheral decarboxylase inhibitors along with levodopa. There are some problems which are not solved. They are involuntary movements. The patient can have involuntary movements, behavioral abnormalities, postural hypotension, excessive daytime sleepiness. So these are the problems which are not solved even though we give carbidopa. So these, this is about carbidopa and benzeracide. I think you guys understood about carbisopa, carbidopa and benzeracide. It is mostly given along with levodopa. So thank you guys for watching my lecture. In my next class, we will learn about dopamine agonists. Thank you for watching my lecture. Thank you.